Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. Today is called the Sunday of the Last Judgment. Kind of terrifying to hear that. The Last Judgment. Uh, it also is Meat Fair Sunday. And so uh, the Orthodox Church, as we get ready for the Great Fast, which is going to happen next week, uh, they give you uh, time to get rid of the meat during the week, and then next week will be Cheese Fair. So in between... Uh, uh, tonight and next week you'll be able to get rid of all the dairy and then we'll begin the, the great fast now this don't let this be legalism the fast uh, st. John Chrysostom tells us it's better to fast from sin than from food so as we can we fast as but uh, the Lord understands if there's dietary problems or medical problems and so forth uh, don't let the fast become a legal thing that you can, uh, you know, snap your suspenders and say, look at me, I'm fasting. That's not the way it goes. It's humility. So today, Sunday of the Last Judgment. On this day, we commemorate the inescapable, and I emphasize the word inescapable, second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ordained by the most divine fathers to be observed after the second parable of the prodigal, which we heard last week. So that no one who has learned of the love of God for mankind, for it will be those who live in laziness, saying, God loves mankind. And when I'm separated from him by sin, all is prepared for my restoration. Listen intently now. This fearsome day of judgment has been des designated for commemoration at this point in time. That through fear of death and the expectation of the future of torment, those who live in laziness may be encouraged to the virtues, not trusting only in the love of God, but also realizing that he is the righteous judge who will judge all men according to their deeds. In other words, those souls who have passed over are obliged to undergo judgment. At this present feast that we're celebrating today, the commemoration of the Judgment Sunday, it is a type of symbol of this that is in that is presented now as a final celebration, just as it will be the last event at our death. Now, the icon of the feast, you can see it over here on the stand next to uh, St. Peter and Paul. I'm gonna describe that a little bit. There's a, if Christ at the top, he's the judge, and then the fire that flows down from the throne of God, you'll see that uh, that uh, we have the Theotokos and the, and the John the Baptist on either side of the Lord, and then as fire flows down, uh, you actually see it go all the way into hell. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, that, that, that's fire burns me. Fire will burn. Well, it's uh, if you love God, if you love the Lord, and you are doing His commandments, then that fire is warmth and light. But if you hate God and you are lazy and are not contributing to the kingdom of God, then uh, that is like burning. It is, it is, it is consuming, all-consuming fire, as the scriptures teach us. So it's good. So you can go on the internet and look at the call of this icon uh, and, uh, and do a little historical search of, of all the imagery. I don't want to spend all day uh, talking about the imagery of the icon, but it's uh, it is... It is the last, it's the judgment seat of Christ which we're seeing here. We say this twice in the liturgy, that we would have a good defense before the awesome judgment seat of Christ. We say that twice in the liturgy. And so you say, well, how, how am I going to be assured if I have a good defense before the awesome judgment seat of Christ? Do His commandments. Love one another. You know the drill. So it, 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 we should contemplate the beginning of the world in Adam's Falling from paradise, which we will commemorate next Sunday, the expulsion from paradise. And it's also called Forgiveness Sunday. We are banished from Eden, Adam and Eve were, and all of us 
who are from his loins are also in trouble because of the ancestral curse. But be of good cheer, Christ has come and he is setting all things right. Now it's called the second coming because Christ appeared to us in the flesh in Bethlehem, didn't he? The Blessed Mother was chosen by Gabriel. He came from God. If I should say God chose the Theotokos to be the container. He would weave in the womb of the most blessed Theotokos, Emmanuel, God with us. So it was the assignment of Gabriel to come and tell her the good news. And he didn't know what to say to this servant of God. He said, Hail, O blessed of the Lord. So when is the second coming going to happen? Nobody knows. For it is mentioned several times in the Gospels. He kept it from his apostles. But before he comes, the Antichrist will appear. He will live his life after the manner of Christ, performing miracles like that which Christ performed and raising the dead, yet everything he does will be an illusion. After this, suddenly, like lightning from heaven, the Lord will come, going before his holy cross, and the river of boiling fire will go before him, cleansing the earth of its defilement. And you can agree with me, the earth is defiled. What's happening in this world right now, when I was a kid, was not happening. And now what's happening in the world now, it's like all the gloves are off and everything is, everything is good. You can do anything you want and there's no law. Except the law that man makes and they forget about the law of God. But the Lord will come like lightning from heaven. The angels will sound the trumpets and you'll see in the icon there the trumpets that they are sounding. All the nations of mankind will gather from all places, from the, all the ends of the earth, and meet at the center of the earth, which is Jerusalem. There will be thrones set up for judgment, and all the souls will be, be reunited with resurrection bodies. They will be clothed in incorruptible beauty and transformed into one likeness. And with one, and with one word, the Lord will separate the righteous from the unrighteous, the sheep, the goats. Those who have done good will receive eternal life. And the sinners will be sent into everlasting fire. They have eternal life too, but the worst part. We're hoping for the eternal life of peace with the Lord Jesus Christ, our Creator. But those who reject the love of God will be cast out. Now let it be noted that Christ will not ask at the judgment seat who fasted, or who was naked, or performed miracles. For all these things are good, but mercy and compassion are far better. He will question both the righteous and the sinners on six commandments, commandment-like virtues of which everyone is capable. We're all capable of doing this. Here they go. For I was hungry, and you gave me to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. He says in, in the gospel this morning, and as much as you've done it to the least of my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then all will confess the Lord Jesus Christ in the glory of God the Father. Now we're not, we're not talking only about physical needs here, we're also talking about spiritual needs. Because what is more important, the temporal body or the eternal spirit? The spirit right now is contained in the body. And I'll get to that in a moment, uh, what the importance is of that. Now the torments, according to the Holy Gospel, are weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Or well, the canker worm dies not. Pretty terrifying, isn't it? 
and the fire is not quenched, and they should be cast into outer darkness, away from the Creator. But the church of God will joyfully delight in attaining the kingdom of heaven, being close to God, their Creator, in His holy place, and receiving the everlasting glory and exaltation. Can you imagine what that's going to be like when the sheep are brought in? But those who are separated from God through wasting the life of their souls in laziness and temporal nourishment will receive torment and darkness and be eternally deprived of the divine radiance. Now we talked about sheep and goats, right, today. The sheep illustrate the righteous. They follow the voice of the great shepherd. The sheep are gentle and productive. That's the attitude of the sheep. I don't know if you ever lived on a farm, I know about sheep and goats. I've watched goats, and I'm, uh, I'm, I know what goats are capable of, and sheep. Goats indicate in this, <coughs> in this parable unrighteousness. But they do not follow the voice of the great shepherd. They walk among the cliffs, which is a picture of sin. It's interesting, when I was, um, I, had, I had the opportunity to travel to Norway and uh, got to the hotel room and uh, opened up the bag and all that stuff and rolled the curtains back and I saw a beautiful mountain in front of the window, like a beautiful mountain. And I kept looking at the mountain, I saw these things moving on the mountain. I said, what is that? And my buddy was with me, he says, those are the goats, the mountain goats. I was amazed at how, how they could move around on, on these sharp stones and all that stuff. Uh, but they were all, they were, they were alone, weren't they? They were doing their thing, I guess you could say. So the, the goats, you don't want to be a goat, right? Who wants to be a goat? I mean, I've, I've been to my buddy's farm and he had goats and they're just nasty animals. They, they have an attitude that the sheep don't have. But also, there's another word in, in the scripture we read this morning, the word inherit. He's talking to the sons and daughters rather than strangers. The righteous become the children of God by adoption. And that brings up Galatians 4, 4 through 7. Let me read that. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent, his, sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth his spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Jesus Christ. For us to see Christ in everyone is a fulfillment of the great commandment to love your neighbor as yourself. Remember, the Creator, everybody you meet, as an image of God in them. But we're all now following the commandments of Christ. The wheats and the tares grow together, don't they? And at the end, they get cut down by the angels and are separated. Now, God did not create hell for mankind. He created it for the devil and his angels. But, unfortunately, People will choose this torment because of the coldness of their heart, refusing the love that is provided by Jesus Christ. It is our choice to love God and do His commandments, being a sheep following the voice of the Great Shepherd or not. It's your choice. That's why He's given us free will. To use the free will in the correct manner. It's a free gift that God has given us. So we can make the right choices in our life. So we can flee from sin and embrace righteousness. Psalmist says, the psalmist in the Psalms, 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Meditate on that a minute. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. So if you're in darkness and you got the lamp on your foot, little candle on your foot it's kind of kind of ridiculous but stay with me and all you see is that area around your foot lit up 
You don't see the whole path, do you? You only see that moment, that step. But as we are obedient to the light, the truth that God gives us, we get another step and more illumination on the path. And then all of these steps, add them together, they equal our destiny. Either you're following the light or you're following the darkness. Either you don't have a little candle on your shoe to see the light, to see, you know, to light up your path, or you're walking in darkness. And we know what the Lord said about walking in darkness. I mean, the first thing I do when I walk into a dark room, I turn on the light switch. Why? Because the light drives away the darkness. What happens in the morning? You know, we go through the evening, it's dark. But in the morning, as the sun comes up, where's the darkness go? It flees. It runs away. The light has more power than the darkness. Now, with our destiny, we can either be a sheep or a goat. Now, God has given us time on this earth. Some say 70 years, maybe more, maybe less. But the time God has given us on this earth is to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Not to waste it, but to be God conscious and always be aware of Him leading you by the Holy Spirit to heaven because uh, don't all of us who love God want to be the great banquet you know go to and and because uh, the Lord talks about this great banquet and that's what hopefully our end goal is to be with Christ at the great banquet so we've been given light to work on our salvation we must become like Christ because the father loves the son doesn't he and if you're acting like Jesus Christ he'll love you all oh, God so loved the world that they gave His only begotten Son. True. But we say in the liturgy, towards the ending prayers of our liturgy, basically, God loves those who love Him. Now, He has provided all the necessary equipment for our salvation by sending Christ and dying on the cross and resurrecting on the third day. He's, he provided it all. That's uh, for God so loved the world. He did all that. But, it doesn't stop there, does it? We have a walk the walk, not just talk, but a walk the walk. We have to be like Christ every moment of the day. Return evil for evil? No. It's easy to return evil for evil. But act like Christ, can you? He has given you the Holy Spirit. Uh, baptism, chrismation in the church, now you're sealed with the Holy Spirit, so act like it. That's what we're supposed to do, act like we're a little Christ, a Christian. It means a little Christ, follower of His commandments. The two greatest ones are, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love thy neighbor as you love yourself. So, the ending line of my message this morning is this. It's our choice. Invest your life wisely. And be a sheep of God, because you know what we read today in the Gospel, what the future is for the sheep. And we know what the future is of the goats. And I ask you, uh, if you can, look at the icon of today's feast of the judgment, of the last judgment, and look at it intently and see where where am I am I uh, the goat or am I the sheep and you have I gave you the steps the six steps to know how to recognize yourself as a sheep of God to hear the voice he says my sheep hear my voice don't they may we through our obedience and our humility and our repentance which is the means of our salvation hear the voice of the great shepherd in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen